Hey, this is book two, chapter four, part two. Maze was looking only at me and turned sideways to the counter, putting his hand lovingly in my back pocket. Don't you worry, I'm always going to get you in one way or another. You know that. We dropped the last of our change on the counter and showed the packy some teeth. I would have gone further with it just to watch him squirm, but better leave it alone. He was shaking his head and so upset he had to count all those pennies. I could tell he felt insulted, but he wasn't going to say anything. America. Money was money and business was business. Mays grabbed me lightly and pulled me back and we walked away and went upstairs. I gave the finger to a camera in the stairwell. A man rushing down the stairs almost steamrolled us. A white man named Black. He kept on moving without any remark at all, the bastard. No manners whatsoever. Hey, Black! Rotten hell! He lived in a little nondescript brick house behind the boarding house, paid for and furnished by all the peasants in the area. Humans are a delicate bunch and can get lost along the way. And in the wrong hands, they may be delivered by Kool-Aid, betrayed by a charismatic, hustled by a politician placed in military uniform, trudging toward their death, enslaved by a contractual obligation or a boardroom's decision, a marriage of convenience from hell. If human consciousness was a flickering candle, Black knew how to play the wick, so it was always in danger of being extinguished. We stayed up in a small room on the fourth floor. I came mostly after hours when the packies closed up shop and headed home, to spare us the headache. Cameras were set up on all floors to deter any unwanted activity and undesirables. A diluted wannabe security detail patrolled the property in their unmarked but clearly rental cop kind of cars and uniforms. Without badges, holstered stun guns they wore with false pride like six shooters, with some Fisher Price walkie talkie phones courtesy of a Nextel plan through Boost Mobile. I would go and dial up my boy, then wait to watch the last of them exit. Sometimes I walk right past the packies on their way to their cars, and they stared at me cross-like, ignoring my salutations. Not my secret favorite, she didn't care. She never once asked for a dime. So I was a punk, so what? Count me among the deluxe, and punk was only a drop of our blood. We showed loving kindness to allies neutrality to strangers, and prayers for the ones who got in our way. We did what we did, needed to do to survive, to satisfy the thirst no sun kissed, no religion, no amount of money could ever solve. If you live, you walk the earth a miracle anyway. No reason to sugarcoat your throat with lies. The slumlords who owned and managed these boarding houses in Oakland we're all the same with our hired rental guards sweeping away trouble with BB guns and Kmart uniforms. And anyone who interfered with their bank accounts was trouble. The victims were often the ones pacing their hundred square foot boarding room flats, trying to keep their sanity. Discouraged from the halls by the cameras, defeated by the world going stir crazy, pushing each other around for some way to medicate the madness, emptying their pockets for some sunshine. Out of money again waiting for the first or the fifteenth, clashing in their different phases, waxing, waning, sweating, complaining. Wow, it was all so draining.